the book of Philemon. It's an interesting book. And uh, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I've got an interesting thought tonight. Uh, and, and I hope it'll help us, all right? Uh, when I was reading this the other day, it helped me, and I hope it'll help us, all right? Uh, let's just read verse 1, then we're going to skip down and pick up, because I want you to see uh, the Apostle Paul's heart as he's writing this, okay? We find in verse number 1, it says, Paul a prisoner of Jesus Christ. So the Apostle Paul is locked up in prison as he's writing this letter. He says, And Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. Now skip with me down to verse 8. Now he's talking to Philemon. Here's what he says. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I'd rather beseech thee, being such an one as Paul the aged, or aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sinned again, thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me. But how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord, if thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee, or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for your good grace. We're thankful we can't outrun your grace. We're thankful, Lord, for your long suffering toward usward. We're thankful for your mercy. We're thankful, Lord, for your ministry of restoration that a lot of people have forgotten about. God, we're thankful for 1 John 1, 9, and we're thankful for forgiveness of sins. Now, Lord, as we come to you, we pray that, Lord, you would bless the reading of the Word of God. We pray that you would help these thy people tonight. Would you edify them, enlighten them to truth? Would you truly help us all to draw nigh to Christ that he might draw nigh to us? I pray you'd bless those that are working with the teens on the other side of the building. Bless their efforts. I thank you for our young people. I pray that you'd put a hedge about them. I pray that as they're taught the word of God, they'd hide it in their heart that they might not sin against thee. I do pray that, Lord, uh, you would grow their faith. You'd help them to be a light to their peers. And I pray you'd use them in this generation in a great and mighty way. Now, Father, I thank you for the good testimonies, the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for being a good God. Now, help us now from the Word of God. Use this unworthy vessel. Meet every need of every heart. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. And amen. I want you to notice, first of all, that Onesimus, and he is really the object of this letter to Philemon. I want you to notice that he was a servant to Philemon. Look again at verse 16. He says, "Now, not now as a servant, but above a servant. There was a time when this man named Onesimus was a servant to Philemon. Now, last week I was doing a little preaching. I told you what would happen a lot of times in Bible days. Uh, they didn't have places where you can just put in an application to get a job. Uh, a lot of times either uh, you were blessed to be able to ha be handed down a business or you was taught the trade of your father uh, or you was uh, blessed to uh, 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 be able to have your own uh, means as uh, maybe your own uh, 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 farm or that sort of thing. But a lot of uh, folks didn't have those opportunities. Uh, if they had no way to make a living for themselves, they would go and join themselves uh, to a citizen of the country. They would become their servant. And what they would do is they, for, for a length of time, uh, 
would commit to a contract to work for this person uh, and the person would pay them a wage, they'd give them a place to uh, live, uh, they'd give them food to eat uh, and they would take care of them. Uh, a, a lot of times uh, the term slave is used but not in the term that we think of it. Uh, these people weren't mistreated. Uh, it gave them a means to the end. Now if you study the Old Testament, uh, a lot of times uh, if they married while they were a servant, uh, the children of the marriage belonged to the one that they served. Uh, and there was a lot of rules and a lot of law uh, dealing with servants. Uh, and we find that Onesimus had been a servant to Philemon. Now notice this, uh, 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 that uh, he had stolen from Philemon. Look at verse 11. The Bible says, Which in time past was to thee unprofitable but now profitable to thee and to me. Look at verse 15. Uh, for perhaps he therefore departed for a season that, he, that thou should receive him forever. Uh, and verse 18 he said, If he hath wronged thee uh, or oweth thee aught. Uh, what Philemon done, he broke, uh, what Onesimus done, he broke the contract with Philemon. Somewhere along the line, Brother Ray, he stopped being the servant. He did not live up to his end. And he wronged Philemon. Uh, uh, he uh, either wronged him in time, he wronged him in money, he wronged him in all that, but he had done Philemon wrong. He skipped out in the middle of the night uh, and left Philemon hanging. Onesimus is not the kind of guy that's got a good reputation right now. So we see he's been a servant. So therefore he couldn't take care of himself. And yet Philemon was kind enough to let him come and, and serve him uh, and he was going to take care of this fellow. Now this fellow has wronged him. And, and who knows how long he's been gone. Who knows how long this has went on. Uh, but it's left a void in Philemon's life at somewhere and uh, at some point. But we know that uh, reading this, and if we took time to read verses 4 through 7, we'd find that Philemon's a man of excellent character. He's got a good testimony. He's got a great reputation in sharing the love of Christ. So here we find that Onesimus is a servant to Philemon. He's stolen Philemon from Philemon. But what a blessing, Onesimus got saved. Look at verse number 10. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, who have I begotten in my bonds. Now Onesimus was a rascal. He stole him from Philemon, and I guarantee you that's not the only thing he done wrong. He's uh, been a fellow that's been in trouble uh, more than a time or two, and isn't it just like God to let Onesimus get arrested and end up in prison with the Apostle Paul. Hmm? And so what does Paul do? Paul does what he does to everybody he comes in contact with. He preaches to him. He, he shares the gospel. Uh, and in their imprisonment, Onesimus trusts Christ. Uh, uh, we find Paul says he's my son. In other words, uh, Paul says he's my son in the faith. I have won him to God uh, while in my bonds. What a blessing. He got saved. Aren't you glad you got saved one night? Hey, some of us were rascals. Uh, some of us uh, uh, had done some uh, very heinous things. Aren't you glad that God knew just how to get a hold of your attention uh, and God put you right where you needed to be uh, and somebody shared Christ with you uh, and in the midst of all your filth and sin and wickedness, God saved you. What a blessing. Uh, so we see that Onesimus got saved. What a, what a real blessing. But then Paul is asking Philemon to now forgive Onesimus and treat him not as a servant, but treat him as a saint of God. Look with me in verse 16. He says, Now not as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord? If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. Hmm. Now, we're going to test our spirituality tonight. Amen. This guy done Philemon wrong. Philemon, by all rights, could have Nismus brought up on charges wherever... He's from. And now the Apostle Paul sends this letter to Philemon. He's encouraging Philemon, tells him he's hearing the great things about his loving kindness to the fellow laborers and how he appreciates him. He says, by the way, you remember Onesimus? Philemon has not forgotten Onesimus. He said, I've begotten him in my bonds. 
And he, he says, I know he's not been profitable to you, but he's profitable to me in the ministry. But I believe he can be profitable with you both in the flesh and in the spirit, in the things of the Lord. He says, but here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to treat him as a servant. I'm sending him back to you. I want you to treat him as a brother beloved. Well, that's kind of difficult, isn't it? Brother Ray, it's okay to forgive somebody from afar. But he's saying, no, I want you to look at him in the eyes and don't hold against him those things which rightfully you could hold against him. I want you to forgive him and then treat him like you'd treat me. Ooh. That's kind of hard, isn't it? This is what I want to preach on tonight. I want to preach on this little thought. I want to preach on hard things made simple. There's some things that we as children of God have to go through that are not easy. They're hard. Hmm? Let me just kind of get real personal. You all kind of sober tonight, so let's get real good and sober. Let me preach to my Aunt Lynn. She really needs it. It's one thing if somebody does something wrong to you. You might even be able to forgive them. But what if somebody does wrong to one of your grandbabies? That's a whole different thing. What if somebody does this precious little fella? How you doing, Owen? Stay away from pocket knives, box cutters. Cut his hand. I preached on not having pocket knife. He's a sissy. Well, he, he's proven he's not a sissy. He's got the cuts to prove it. But anyway, somebody done that boy wrong. Boy, oh, it'd be hard for them to come and say, I'm sorry I done him wrong, forgive me. And you have to look at him all the time. Seeing the scars on him and have him forgive, that's hard. Amen. That's hard living. Huh? Can I say? It's hard living if you see God blessing other people's child and he takes one of yours. That's hard. Hmm? It's hard when somebody kisses you on the cheek and stabs you in the back. And then you've got to forgive them. Now I know the Baptist creed. I know what we say. Well, I've got to love them, but that don't mean I've got to like them. Give me chapter and verse for that. No, we're to forgive them. We're to forgive them 70 times 7. And to forgive them, we're to forgive them like Christ, you know, like God for Christ's sake had forgiven us. You know, when God forgives us, He not only forgives us and cleanses us, He forgets all back because it's gone. It's not easy forgetting, Colonel, when somebody's done us wrong. Sometimes we've got to do some hard things. How about that turn the other cheek verse? I want to tell you, I ain't got that one down. Huh? That's a hard thing. I got to preach a friend of mine, Brother Ron. I don't know if I ever told you. I got to preach a friend of mine, took a church, and the former pastor spit in his face on the steps of the church because he had the children take up a change offering. I won't tell you nobody's ever spit in my face. But I tell you what, that would, that would be a test of what kind of Christian character you got. Can I say to this, to, to, to this man's credit, he stood there and took it. I told him, I said, you probably got a whole lot more God on you than I'd had on me. Huh? I'm going to say, sometimes we go through some very hard things. And sometimes the Lord is so gracious, and I know when there have been attacks on me, the Lord just kind of shuts my mouth. And that's an amazing, miraculous thing, trust me. And you just got to take it. But that don't mean you get over it. Paul is exhorting Philemon to not only forgive, but to get over it. That's a hard thing. So let me give you some things on how hard things are made simple. Can I say, it helps in knowing Paul's attitude in this whole situation. Look with me, if you will, in verse number 12. Now look what Paul says. Now Paul has said in verse 11 that he's profitable to the apostle Paul. Onesimus has been a blessing since he's got saved. 
But look at what Paul says in verse 12. Whom I've sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels. He said, you receive him like you receive me. Verse 13. Whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. You know what the Apostle Paul was saying? The Apostle Paul was saying, he's been a blessing to me, he would be profitable to me while I'm in bonds. He can run errands for me, he can take letters out, he can uh, do all kinds of things that I can't do because uh, I am imprisoned. But he's able to do those things for me now and he's uh, paid his debt and he has gotten born again and he's a blessing. He said, but I would not do this without your mind on it. And I wouldn't want you to think that I'm doing anything behind your back. He says, I don't want it out of a necessity, but willingly. It helps that he knows the apostle's mind on this. Now, this has nothing to do with the message, but I'm just going to tell you. There used to be a code among Baptist churches. Here's how it would work. If somebody showed up here, and they showed up here from another local Baptist church and I found out that they were from a local Baptist church I would find out why they're not at their local Baptist church and I would make certain that on the morrow I would be calling that pastor and say look some of your members showed up here that's a common courtesy he may not even be aware that they're out shopping for another church it might give him an opportunity to recover them or else they might be a rascal and they might have caused problems at the other church and I certainly want to know about it because we don't need any problems around here. we got enough. we got my Aunt Lynn sitting there or she's already mad because somebody picked on Owen. So we don't need any other problems, all right? But see what happens is Brother Tony brought out there's a lot of churches, they're struggling. So if anybody shows up, they're glad to have them. They don't pay the common courtesy anymore. We've got people in the church today. When they came here, they came here, but they'd had a problem at their former church, uh, and they, they would tell you, I would tell them, they've got to go make it right with that church and with that pastor before they can come here and become a member here. And we've done that, and we've had folk, we got folks still in the church that they did that. They made it right there. We welcomed them here. We've never had a problem out of them here. It wasn't because there was a problem there. Uh, it was just something that was right to do. The Apostle Paul's got the right attitude on this thing. He's not doing doing anything behind his back. There are fellows today, they'll steal anybody's sheep. There's something wrong with that. Amen. Listen, let me just make a statement. God never hurts one church to help another church. Amen. And can I help you something? There's enough sinners out there that we can stock all of our churches. Are you listening? Uh, so it helps that the Apostle Paul's got the right attitude when he's writing this letter, but how are hard things made simple? What well, can I say? This hard thing was made simple to Philemon because of who is asking. Look again at verse number 18. He says, If thou hast wronged thee or oweth thee, put that on mine account. Uh, verse 17, If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. It helps uh, 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 my dear friend Philemon because the Apostle Paul's the one asking. Uh, you and I can have hard things made simple if we get in the Bible and we see what God asks of us being his children. Uh, he said this is how the world would know we're his disciples, uh, that we have love one for another. Uh, if we have the right attitude and the right spirit, if we have a forgiving spirit, uh, if we do uh, what Jesus is asking, uh, my dear friends, if you'll take that step to be obedient to what God has said, uh, God will help make the hard things simple. Uh, it depends on who's asking. Uh, hey, uh, uh, we are saved because of Jesus' account. Uh, what he did on the cross of Calvary, uh, he paid our sin debt. Uh, we are his sons and daughters of the faith. Are you listening? Uh, and because of what he's done for us, uh, he reached way down in that my repent. Uh, pulled us up, put us on a rock. Uh, uh, saved our never dying soul. Put songs of praise in our mouth. Uh, for all that Jesus has done for you and I. Uh, is there anything he could ever ask of us that would be too hard, my dear friends? Uh, hard things are made simple based on who's asking. Now listen, you may ask me something I might not be too keen about. 
But if my darling wife asks me something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to break my neck to do it. Huh? I told you all a few weeks ago, you don't decorate Christmas before Thanksgiving. Our house looks like Christmas threw up on it. Huh? Why? She says, well, Ella's got to see it. We're going down to Brother Rocky's for Thanksgiving, and she's got to see all this stuff. So we've got it all up. And Ella don't care one bit about any of it. <laughs> Say, why did you do that, preacher? Because my wife asked, and she's put up with me for 34 and a half years, and if she asks for anything, she's going to get it. Huh? Amen. Can I say, when the Lord asks us to forgive, and the Lord asks us to love, and the Lord asks us to look beyond people's faults and see their needs. And the Lord asks us to restore. I didn't know she was going to sing that song, Miss Brittany. Uh, 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 when, when the Lord asks us to do those things, even though they're hard in the flesh, that inward man, that Holy Ghost inside of us, makes it simple. Isn't it amazing? Have you ever really fretted doing something? Maybe witnessing to somebody, maybe talking to somebody, maybe, you know, the Lord just gets you out of your comfort zone and you're really dreading it. But then you take that step to do it and all of a sudden the Lord helps you and you think, well, that wasn't that big of a deal at all. Hmm? Amen. You know, it's that fear of not knowing. Once we get through that, the hard things are made simple. And when the Lord ever opens the door and asks us to do something, Trust me, he's got enough grace to help you get through it. huh? Hard things are made simple. The hard thing was made simple to Philemon because of who was asking. But can I say this? The hard thing was made simple to Philemon because of the credit Paul had accrued. Look at verse 19. He said, I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it. Paul said, I don't know what he owes you. He said, I'm the one that's written this letter to you. And whatever he's wronged you or owed you with, don't worry about it, I'll repay it. Amen. Now, there's some people tell you they'll pay it, and they're never going to pay it. But Paul had accrued a credit with Philemon. Philemon trusted what the boss of Paul said. And Paul said he'd pay it. That meant he'd pay it. I, I can tell you right now, I can kind of feel Philemon's spirit. He probably said, that's okay, Brother Paul. It's already been paid for. The Lord's paid for it. Hmm? Huh? But just that the fact that Paul is willing to pay it, he said, that's good enough for me. Hmm? Can I say, I don't know about you, but the Lord's been awful good in my life. The Lord has blessed me far beyond my deserving. And anything the Lord asks of me, yeah, I know there's going to be a payday someday. I know one of these days we're going to stand before the Lord uh, and we're going to re receive uh, 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 rewards based on the deeds done in this body. Uh, and friend, I know uh, 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 when the Lord blesses us with those things, uh, uh, we're going to lay them back at His feet because He's worthy. Uh, uh, just getting to be at His feet to be worth it all, friend. Uh, but hey, uh, the Lord's been so good to me. Is there anything He could ever ask of me that I wouldn't be worthy? willing to do huh Amen. Lord's been good to me listen I am busier at 60 than I was 40 in the ministry now I don't know how I got to be 60 but I'm here huh you remember when we were young I don't huh long time ago huh you remember when you was young I remember when you was young when I started dating her you was young mm -hmm. you ain't no more nope a long time ago, huh? But hey, Brother Ray, I remember when you had hair. Curly, red, blue in the breeze. You look so much better now. Some heads weren't meant to have hair. That was one of them right there. Huh? Look. Oh, we, we, we've we been down the road and, and gotten older. I'm busier now than I've ever been. And I appreciate all the mother hens in this church that preach, you got to slow down. Preach, you got to take care of yourself. Preach, you got to get some rest. Preach, I appreciate what you're saying. The truth of the matter is, the Lord has been so good to me. And when the Lord opens a door and wants me to go through it, I'm going to go through it. It's not convenient. It's not convenient running up and down the roads and all that. And I'm telling you what, airplanes kill you. But listen. I don't want to face the Lord not doing what He asks of me. Right. And the Lord sure has been so good to me. 
I, I, I was sitting in Jacksonville a few weeks ago, and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, what am I doing here? He's in St. Lucia, Brother Adrian and I. And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, how in the world did I get here? And I'm looking across my life and all the doors, and I'm thinking, who am I? I'm a nobody. What am I doing here? And how am I end up here? And what is God? But God, for whatever reason, has enlarged my coast. Uh, and uh, it may not be convenient to the flesh, and it may not be easy all the time. Uh, and uh, uh, trying to uh, pastor and take care of your needs and then go through those doors, it's not always easy. But hey, uh, as good as Jesus has been, uh, hey, he opens that door you walk through he takes care of it all and I bless his holy name Philemon had this hard thing made simple because of the credit Paul had accrued because of the person who was asking but also because of his own personal account look with me again in verse 19 he said I Paul have written it with my own hand I will repay it now look at this albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. Paul reminds Philemon, had it not been for the apostle Paul, Philemon might already be in hell. He said, you're a debtor to me because I brought the gospel to you. Well, my dear friends, wow! Think about that. You know we all are indebted to somebody? Amen. Somebody shared Jesus Christ with you. Might have been parents, might have been grandparents, might have been a preacher, might have been a neighbor, might have been... Somebody told you about Jesus. You didn't just wake up someday and say, well, I think I'll give church a try. Hmm? No, we didn't even retain God in our knowledge. We wasn't looking for Him. He came looking for us. And the Apostle Paul reminds Philemon, you know, if God wouldn't have used me in your life, you'd be in worse shape than an isthmus. Hmm? He reminded Philemon of his own personal account. I looked up that word where, you know, he said, put that on mine account. And I, I, I kind of knew what it meant, but I found out it meant some other things. You know what that word account means? First of all, it means a debt. We all had a debt we couldn't pay. But Jesus paid it with his own blood on the cross of Calvary. And this not only means debt, it also remains, means value. How much value do you put in your Christianity? What sum do you put out there on how much it means to be saved? So, well, it didn't cost me anything, but it cost God everything. He bankrupt heaven to pay for your sin debt. There is not, the Bible says, what profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul, own soul? What value do you put on being saved? It means your debt. It means value. But what profit? How much better is your life since you got saved? I've been saved 49 and a half years. I have yet to meet one person ever say, well, I wish I'd never gotten saved. Hmm? Now, I've met some sorry Christians, but they're still glad they're a Christian. But I've never met anybody that was sorry that they became a Christian. Hmm? Think about that. How much better has your life been since you got saved? Some of you used to have addiction problems. Now you're addicted to the Bible. You're addicted to the Lord. You're addicted to church. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, uh, some of you used to have a, 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 a foul language. You don't have foul language. You speak praise unto the Lord. Some of you just used to be rascals, and now you're sitting in church. Uh, some of you used to be hotheads. Some of you used to be thugs. Some of you used to be all kinds of things. But Jesus came by. Look at you now. Uh, you're sitting in the house of God. Uh, uh, you are accepted among the beloved. Uh, your name's written down in heaven. And you have a blessed hope. Uh, if the trumpet sound tonight, you know you're going to heaven. Uh, hey, look how much better your life has become. Uh, the Lord gave you joy, peace, love, gentleness, meekness, goodness, temperance. Uh, hey, all oh, gifts and uh, fruits of the Spirit. Uh, what a blessing to have the peace of God and peace with God. Uh, hey, friend, uh, what an account we had settled long ago. Uh, uh, our life is better. But account also means motive. Our motive ought to be to please Jesus Christ. Amen. And look how our motives and goals have changed in being Christians. That word account also means to deem or to judge. 
Aren't you glad your sins are under the blood? And aren't you glad when you take into account where you could have been and where you are? You could judge a whole lot differently now because you have a better sense of judgment. Uh, it also means to esteem. I don't know about you, but I'm not really looking around this world and, and, and driving in too many stakes into the ground. I'm esteeming for a better country. I'm kind of like Abraham. I'm looking for a city that's built by God, aren't you? Uh, my aspirations have, a change, have changed. It also means, and I kind of know this because my daughter's an accountant, it means to compute or to reckon. Do you ever just stop and take inventory of your life? You ought to get you out a piece of paper and just start writing down how God's blessed you. Start counting your blessings. You won't get ten of them down. You'll be having a fit in your living room wherever you write it down, huh? When you get to seeing how good God's been, you start computing all the things God's done in your life and how good He's been to you, huh? And then it means to render. Hmm? And can I say, being saved, we have an account with God and we ought to render unto Him our life. We ought to render unto Him praise. We ought to render unto Him thanksgiving. We ought to render unto Him worship. Oh, what an account we had said. I'm glad I have a personal account with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad I have a relationship with Him, aren't you? Huh? You think of all these people caught up in all these cults. They have no hope of eternity. They're trying to work or earn their way to a utopia. They have no relationship with the God they supposedly serve. Aren't you glad that we not only have a relationship to with Him, but we're part of His family? Uh, we talk with Him whenever we want. We walk with Him. What a blessing to be saved tonight. When you get to thinking about your own personal account and what you really owe to God, those hard things He asks of us really become simple. Uh, now, I'm not making light that you suffer hard things. The Bible says, Yea, they that uh, live godly shall suffer persecution. And it's never easy when you go through hurt. Can I say what hurt is? Hurt hurts. Hmm? But when you, in the midst of your pain, consider the pain Jesus went through for you and I, and if He asks you in the midst of your hurt to forgive, and you realize how much He's forgiven you, it makes that hard thing more simple. Hmm? I thought about this lastly, and yes, I said lastly. Because I'm feeling that carrot cake about the middle of my throat right now. Oh, it was good. Had cream cheese icing on it. Had walnuts in it. It's good, Brother Ray. Trust me, it's good. Huh? Mm. It was, this hard thing was made simple to Fleeman because of the impact that it accomplished. Look at verse 20. Paul says, Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. The Apostle Paul knew Philemon's spirit before he wrote the letter. When Philemon read it, the hard thing was made simple because that it was going to be a blessing to the Apostle Paul. And who knows how much more it would accomplish for God's glory. Hmm? Listen. Brother Ron, I don't know who won you to the Lord, but if at any point in your life, if you could have done anything to be a blessing to that person, you'd have done it. Hmm? I just know your spirit. But if you can see in the grand scope that when we do what Christ asks of us, it not only pleases Christ, but it impacts somebody else. We never know how God is working in our life and what He's doing in our life. All we know is that we need to do what He says. 
Sometimes we're planting, sometimes we're watering, but God gives the increase. But you never know how a word fitly spoken may change somebody's life. You never know what you can be to, uh, to somebody, to be a blessing to somebody, just listening to them when they're in, 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 in peril. But when you forgive somebody that's wronged you, it not only impacts that person, but others that are watching. There are some people saying, well, if that had been me, bless God, I'd have But they said, but he showed Christ. Man. You see, hard things are made simple when you realize that it accomplishes something for God's glory. God help us to realize when things come into our life, it's not the end. It's just a means for God to get glory from our lives. I read this yesterday. I forget the name of the poet. I'm not really big into poets. I leave that for Brother Ray. He's the poet expert from Stanton, Kentucky. But I read this part of a poem. I thought it was really good. It says, every storm cloud eventually runs out of rain. And sometimes those storm clouds seem awful dark. But eventually the sun does shine again. Amen. Eventually the rain does stop. And can I say, friend, in Christ Jesus, the pain will go away. Amen. The Lord does have a balm of Gilead. Right. He knows how to ease our hurt and our pain. Amen. And friend... God's so good that when it cuts deep, Brother Phil, He'll let it heal and leave a scar. And He leaves a scar to remind you that you don't hurt anymore. Oh, yeah. And look what God's done. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? That's good. Hmm? I've counseled people in times go by, and listen, I'm no counselor, trust me. When people come, I try to listen to them, try to, try to give them some advice, but I always try to give them Bible, because if the, if the Bible won't help them, we're in trouble. But every time, Brother Bob, when I talk with people, I'll say, look, you're going to have good days and bad days. You're going to take three steps forward and one step back, and then one step forward, two back. One. I said, but there's going to come a point when you're going to look back and you're going to realize, hey, I'm not there anymore. Look what God's done. And can I say, sometimes He constrains us to get in the ship, and sometimes in the midst of the night, when we're toiling in the ship, uh, a, a storm blows up, and we can't go backwards or forwards, and we think we're going to perish in the midst of the sea. And then He comes walking by, gets in the boat with us, we go to the other side, and we realize He was there all the time. And sometimes, friends, He allows us to face hard things. To show the world we're cut from a different cloth than them because he indwells us and if we'll just remember who's asking us to walk through that door remember the credit he's accrued in our lives remember our own account that he settled and realize that if God can reach in to his shepherd's bag and pull any of us out to take on a giant the fact that God wants to put his hand in your life and use you to accomplish something for his glory friend it becomes more simple does it mean that it won't be a struggle no does it mean you won't hurt no does it mean that you're going to have this flash of miraculous light around you and everything's going to no but it means his grace is sufficient and God will do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Amen. So the next time you're faced with something hard, just remember old Philemon. And remember how it must have impacted so well that God included the letter in the Bible. And look at how many lives have been helped and changed for the last 2,000 years because of a guy who was willing to take on a hard thing and handle it with the right spirit. Now let me just say this.
You may be facing something that's hard. I hate you're facing something that's hard. And if you're hurting, I really hate that. It's nothing worse than a parent watching their children hurt. And as a pastor, sometimes seeing you hurt, it makes me hurt. But I do know this. The Lord is faithful and true. And He's not turned His back on you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul told Timothy, he said, All men forsook me. Nevertheless, the Lord stood by me. And if you'll just turn your eyes on Jesus, even in the midst of your hard things, He'll simplify them. And friend, you'll too. will come through it, and He'll get glory. If you're facing something tonight, just give it to Him. Say, Lord, just give me the strength to trust you and watch and see if it doesn't get more simple in your life. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song. Let's get this Brother Clint with the guitar because Brother Daniel's over on. You got it worked out? All right. I think Brother Daniel's over there with the teens. Don't know what you're facing, but I know God can handle it. If he's speaking to your heart, you just come and roll it over on him. Some are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, there's a lot of times we don't have the answer, but we're glad you do. And Lord, would none of us like to hurt. None of us like to face hard things. But Lord, if you allow it to come into our life, that means, Lord, you've equipped us for it. So God, I pray you'd help us to bring glory to you in every situation. Now, Lord, anybody that's really suffering here tonight with something, God, I pray you'd help them. I pray that, Lord, you just administer that special grace you store up for times like this. And, God, I pray you'd give them the faith to stay true to the things of God. Now, Lord, I pray for any need anybody has tonight. You know the needs of every heart. And, Lord, whatever that need may be, I pray that, Lord, they'll trust you with it. Now, Lord, we pray especially if there's somebody here tonight, like Onesimus, when he met up with the Apostle Paul, lost without Christ. I pray that, Lord, you'd speak to their heart. I know it wasn't a salvation message, but, Lord, I pray, Lord, they'd come, put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, have your will and way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.